Hey, I'm Max. And I'm Mike. We play in the Arkells, and you're live in limbo. Boom. Hey, I'm Shannon from Live in Limbo. We're sitting here with the Ark Hells. Um, we'll start off with congratulations on the release of your new album, um, Morning Report. Thank you. It's a big day. Yeah, yeah, it is. I had the pleasure of listening to it before it came out. And uh, you got a sneaky advanced copy. I did. Nice. I sat in my room. I texted my sister. I was like, Haley, you'll never guess what I'm listening to. Uh, cool. <laughs> she was like, no way. I was like, yeah. But um, it's amazing. I'm not going to lie. Oh, uh, thank you. So different than anything you guys have released before, which was surprising for me. Um, do you mind telling us a little bit um, about what inspired you guys to like create such a different record? Yeah, you know, um, I think the first thing is like we we have you know High Noon and Michigan Left and Jackson Square in our catalog and they exist and we're very proud of them, but we don't need to make those again. Mm -hmm. And I think as music listeners and fans of music, we're really inspired by so many different kinds of artists and every year there's like a whole new collection of bands that inspire us and that we want to steal their tricks from. Mm -hmm. So uh, on this record, we were just listening to different influences. You know, there's, um, you know, really a, a deep appreciation for like hip hop production and pop music and electronic music. And we're at our core still a rock and roll band. Yeah, of course. And that's who we're always going to be. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really exciting when you can blend genres together. And in 2016, the idea of genre and you know, Mike says is kind of antiquated. Like kids don't care about like exactly. if you're a punk yeah. guy or it's like mm -hmm. just like as long as it's exciting. Uh, then that is uh, what you should be thinking about. Yeah, for sure. Um, like for me, I look at bands like the 1975 who yeah. are blowing up globally, playing arenas like all over the world. And from the start, they've never blended into a genre, you know, and obviously you guys have taken that direction with your new album. Yeah, I love that 1975 record. So I do a good, good uh, Matt invitation actually. Can I hear it? Tastes like chocolate. <laughs> You know he does that. It's so good. Have you ever seen them live? No, no, I've seen videos. Yeah. He's awesome. He Very is. captivating front guy. Nobody like does that anymore either. He's he's kind of he throws back actually to like another time when you, you could just be like a very skinny, hilarious uh, front guy. Like I think that's why they captivate so much attention though, is because yeah. he's so fascinating to watch. Like you're watching him, he's just like you can't keep your eyes off of him. Yeah, I've seen them a few times. Yeah. Um. So you guys, your first single was Private School, obviously. Um, when I first heard it on the edge, I literally didn't know it was you guys like at all. The first three times I heard it until they said oh, the Arkells and I was like, that's the Arkells. Um, so like what made you guys want to release it as like the first single? I think that was a part of it. Like, I think if people heard it and went, oh, also, that's obviously the Arkells. They're just kind of up to their old tricks again. It's like, that was what we were trying mm -hmm. to avoid, I think. And, and when that song was done, it felt really fresh to us and, and we were really proud of it for being, yeah, different than, than what we had done before. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was, that was a part of the, the plan, I think. Yeah, for sure. I find with music, usually, um, I find artists get stuck in two traps. There's either the all their music sounds the same and you release a new album people are like I've heard this before or the they're not the same as they used to be so you kind of have to find like a middle ground where we're still the Arkells but we're not high noon you know and I think you guys have captured that really well with Morning Report yeah I think we tried to change honestly I don't like this record is different but I don't think we were trying to trying to be something that we weren't I think that like Max was saying if there was a sound that was exciting or an idea or a reference that we were like really into we would just chase it down and, and not think too much about it really just kind of follow our gut yeah it's kind of like we're making the music we want to make because we want to make it not because this is what people will like or whatnot you know yeah and i think that's that's something that not a lot of artists have the freedom to do and you guys have been a band for quite some time now so you do you have like this is your what fourth record yeah so it's like yeah you now you have that creative freedom right um so we're on the topic of singles you guys released drake's dad and um, it's a very intriguing title. Can you tell us a little bit about the story behind that? Uh, yeah, so the story is is based on a true story about 17 friends driving through the American South in, a rented, in three <laughs> rented minivans and just the magic of the night and what happens when you're around people you really like and that are gregarious and excited to be around each other. And in this particular occasion, we ran into Drake's dad, Dennis, <laughs> at the bar in Memphis. And it was just like one part of the night. Another day, Adam, uh, who's mentioned in the second verse, took off his pants and got arrested for indecent <laughs> exposure. Uh, but the song's about friendship. And it's also, 
It's about the love of friendship, but it's also about the love you have for your partner back home. And, you know, we, we tour a lot and we're so lucky to have like supportive partners mm -hmm. uh and that you can crawl into bed with and go oh, i miss you so much and and that kind of love too that exists because yeah. that's what really what the course is about like i hold you so high i hold you so tight so hold up that light like you're like they're a lighthouse so i can come home and find you yeah i can imagine like personally i, I never really leave my house but <laughs> <laughs> except to come here except to come here obviously but i can't imagine like being on the road and being away from someone for like three four months at a time like i can't even do two yeah weeks. usually it's uh <laughs> not three or four months but usually three or four weeks occasionally yeah. and uh but you know we're lucky there's facetime and cell phones but i, th I feel like touring back in the day before mm -hmm. cell phones and long distance calls costed a lot of money and like that, that <laughs> yeah. would have been really hard you know it's like it's okay you're coming with me yeah. like you're, you're packing up your whole life for this relationship yeah yeah um so I saw that you guys have played like three of the biggest festivals in the States this year. You've played Bonnaroo, you played Lollapalooza, and you played Firefly. Um, that obviously is a huge milestone in a career for you. What was that like? It was great. You know, um, those are definitely kind of bucket list mm -hmm. festivals that you'd want to play. And uh, there's a lot, there's so many bands, good bands out there. Uh, there's like this many good bands and there's like this many spots at the festival. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. There's like this many. Uh, and so we were just sort of waiting for our opportunity to, mm -hmm. to get invited. And this summer we got invited to, uh, to three of them and it was really awesome. The crowds were great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, we try our best just to be the best band we can be. And then after that, it's out of our hands and you just sort of like pray to the, the festival gods that they like you or whatever. And, yeah. uh, and so that's, that's definitely part of it. Yeah. Well, I actually was at Firefly. Um, oh, you were? I, my sister and I trekked eight hours in my Honda Civic to Firefly. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. And you guys were the first act that we caught. We were a little bit late, got stuck in traffic. But for me as a Canadian driving eight hours from home and seeing like being in the middle of the crowd and seeing everyone singing your song, I was like, this is, this is unreal. And like, how does that feel for you to travel so far and still have so many people like supporting you all over the world? Yeah, it's really great. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, not something that we ever expected to have happen. And and Firefly in particular was a really cool festival. We got to play for the campers the night before, and I think that yeah, that, that, that really mm -hmm. helped. And like, mm -hmm. so I think that these festivals are are really exciting for us because uh, I think people are going there with a sense of discovery, and they're they're such a diverse. Uh, uh, programming at a lot of these festivals now. Mm -hmm. So for us as a rock band, we're actually kind of the minority sometimes at these festivals. Yeah. And, uh, but it's great when people still connect and they, there's still this connection between all these different genres. So that's my favorite part of those festivals. Just, just being a part of, of modern music and, and, and being relevant for these, these young people. Yeah, for sure. I also saw that you guys played the, uh, the stub hub stage. Oh yeah, the acoustic one. Yeah, and we caught part of that. We were in the back standing on picnic tables because there were so many people. Like, were you expecting that many people to come to an acoustic session at like 10.30 at night? No, we definitely weren't. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah, we're always kind of blown away. Um, yeah, especially when we travel far away from home. Like we, you know, played in Berlin to a sold out club with like 500 people there. And, and that's sort of blows yeah. my mind. So was, yeah, we definitely sort of the... the um, the magic of being in a band like isn't lost on us. You know, it's exactly. not like we're at a point where we're like, yeah, whatever, sold out the arena again. <laughs> it's like we really are grateful when anybody gives a shit. Uh, yeah, it's like personally as a concert goer, seeing when an artist you can feel when they're genuine and yeah. there's nothing like being in a crowd and knowing that you're appreciated. Like Totally. You know, and you sometimes you go to shows and you're just like, they're just here to make their dollar and go home. Yeah. And, and that stinks. And that does stink. Yeah. And you're just like, I'm nothing but another number to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you guys are hitting the road. Well, I guess you've already been on the road doing the festival circuit and whatnot. But always on the road. Always, on, always the road. on the road. But this fall, you guys are supporting Frank Turner and you're also doing throwing in some headlining dates there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, new album, new sound. What can we expect from a live show? Well, the, the big news, actually, because it's more local, we just announced like 10 minutes ago we're playing two nights at Massey Hall. I saw that. Yeah. So that's going to be really fun. And Frank's going to open for us at those shows. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. So it should be really special. And, uh, you know, we're excited to play the new material. For special occasions like Massey Hall, we'll be bringing uh, an extended band. So we'll have mm -hmm. a three-piece horn section and backup singers. 
Uh, and and the new songs really lend themselves to that kind of arrangement. Yeah. And we played last night in the mod club with the extended band, and it's just a lot of fun. I I hate, just hate playing guitar now. I just want to <laughs> dance, uh, and this helps that uh, cause. Yeah, for sure. Um, Massey Hall is like an iconic venue. I remember I saw Ben Howard there uh, a couple months ago. Oh, nice. And I remember he tweeted like the legendary Massey Hall, and you guys are headlining that. Like, how is like is that surreal for you? Yeah, definitely. We we've never played there, and and we've seen so many great shows there, mm-hmm. and and so, uh, yeah, it's it's an honor. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Uh, coming up with this show, like Max was saying, this ten piece band, and really showing off their musicality and and the the musicality of the new songs. I mm-hmm. think Massey Hall is gonna, gonna be an awesome place to do that. So. Yeah, it's, it's circled on our calendars. It's yeah. It's a really big day for <laughs> you, sure. You can't beat the acoustics in Massey Hall either. Like the sound is unreal. Yeah. And, and everybody has a good uh, vantage and, and just the history and you can feel the history in that place. Yeah, so. for sure. And especially being like living around the area, so many of fr- my friends and everyone like obsessed with you guys because like you're a local band, right? And you play Jackson Triggs every year, which is like 15 minutes from my house. So it's really cool to see you guys like playing such in like a huge venue as like yeah it's cool for us we're excited (laughs) (laughs) yeah for sure um so you are finishing off uh i guess in december at um the town ballroom in buffalo with two headlining dates yeah one of which was already sold out yeah the saturday which is really cool are you gonna come um probably on friday you gotta come it's a few days before my birthday so (laughs) of course i have to come um town ballroom is actually like my favorite venue me too i love it it's like if it's in a thousand cap room and for a thousand cap room it's the best in north america because there's like so many levels and tears yeah yeah no matter where you are you can see and there's like great energy everywhere you can like move around and everything i love town ballroom yeah but yeah and we know the people who run it and they're good people I know. I actually met the guy once. Donnie. <laughs> Donnie cuts back. Shout out to Donnie. <laughs> you know, shout outs here. Um, so is that any indication of like new, uh, headlining tour further in the new year? Yeah. So we're going to announce uh, more Canadian dates and more American dates. Yeah. Well, we're going to be touring a lot. And so mm-hmm. right now we have those Frank Turner dates on the books and the, there'll be more stuff coming down the line. Yes. That's when you put a record, that's the point of it. You, so you can go tour it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, um, do you guys find that when you were writing the record, you were t- catering it for a live show or were you kind of just like going with it and doing what? There's some songs that are very like studio based that like I wasn't thinking that much about it. Like mm-hmm. uh, like Passenger Seat or Hangs the Moon. Yeah. Those songs are like intimate and I think will be beautiful and sound amazing at a place like Massey Hall. Mm-hmm. But there are some songs that I can just like that, like my, my move in the studio is just to think about how people are going to dance to them. Yeah. So whether, uh, cause I predicted correctly how people would dance a leather jacket when we were recording. Did the you? Studio. Yeah. Yeah. And never thought this would happen. <laughs> uh, and so on this record, uh, I predicted the Drake's dad dance. I'm predicting the little rain dance. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we definitely keep in mind like the way the crowd is going to feel yeah move to the to for the beat. sure i mean i'm looking forward to your dance moves for uh any of those songs thank you yeah it's a, a sight to be seen do you like sit there with the hair do you still do the hairbrush in the mirror thing where you like practice your moves in the mirror uh or do you just i don't do it with a hairbrush i just do it whenever i can see my reflection <laughs> <generally speaking. laughs> Are you one of those people like walks by a mirror and you're like hey yeah, no, you know, normally i'm kind of disappointed uh <laughs> But but I do like to it is it is a good thing to see yourself move and see what works and doesn't work. Yeah. OK, well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. It's thanks for making the trek down here. Yeah, no problem. I thanks for listening. Problem. What's your favorite song? Um, Honestly, I would say Drake Stab probably. Nice. I love it. It's such a fun song. Yeah. For me. And it has like I like songs where it's like has like an overarching theme, but also has a deeper meaning within the song, which I guess you fully yeah. explained, which is like my favorite thing. Ah, thank you. That's yeah, awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys live, hopefully at the town ball. Yeah, come to town ball. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome.